We're two weeks from the trade deadline, and could the San Jose Sharks be adding another first-round pick in the 2024 NHL Draft? Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day. If you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube as well. If you haven't subscribed, uh, I don't know what you're doing because we are two weeks away from the NHL trade deadline. And the Sharks are looking to be one of the big, big players, at least, uh, as basically everybody except for a few key players are going to be available. So we're going to dig into some of the latest trade rumors, uh, look at if Luke Cunning and Mario Frodo to Toronto makes way too much sense and what the Sharks could be getting back. Uh, if Mikel Granlin is just too valuable to actually trade. And why Couture and Hurdle are probably going to be here at least to the trade deadline. Um, but what might happen over the summer. So um, I think that we have to start with Luke Cunning and Mario Ferraro. Um, so the fourth period, a.k.a. David Pagnoni, or Pagnonia, uh, he had a column come out earlier this week uh, about how basically everybody is kind of talking with the Sharks. The Sharks are open for business, as he puts it. Um, minus a few young players on the tree level contracts, everyone, their dog appears to be available and GM Micro is willing to listen. So, um, but the kind of the big news that's come out of here is the Toronto Maple Leafs have been at like kind of sniffing around Luke Cunning and Mario Ferraro. Um, a couple reasons why one, again, the Maple Leafs are in a bit of a tough situation here when it comes to their cap. So they're looking for kind of almost like um, when Barkley Goodrow was traded to to Tampa a couple years ago for a first round pick. Yes. I know the Sharks had to give up a third round pick in exchange, but um, they wanted a young cheap player that they could control. Um, Mario Faro has got two years left on his deal at $3.25 million. And Luke Cunning is an RFA going into the season. So you, you were after the season. So you control these players contracts for the next couple seasons, right? They're, they're cost controlled players that isn't going to break the bank. Like Luke Cunning, you can kind of play the one year. You can kind of keep giving them one year deals for or next couple seasons um, while he continues to kind of go through his, his RFA status and then trade him at the end of his RFA if you want to, or whatever you want to do. But again, the Maple Leafs uh, going into next season, they have $21 million projected cap um, with 11 players signed. So they need to kind of work around the fringes, especially with, you know, so many, you know, you have next year, then uh, an Islander, the Nylander deal kicks in. Um, you have the Austin Matthews deal, both kicking in next year. Um, John Tavares is going to be the last year of his deal. Um, Marner is going to be the last year of his deal. You saw Morgan Riley, who's getting paid. Like they have a lot of expensive contracts that they're going to have to kind of navigate next year. Um, you know, and, and try to kind of build around the fringes, kind of like what the Sharks had to do, not to this extreme of paying for players 10 plus million dollars. So, for them having cost controlled uh, kind of guys that are entering their prime right now um, is what they're trying to do as they're trying to kind of win, make their, their long awaited cup run. Um, I think that if, if you can potentially get a first round pick from the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, I think it makes way too much sense for Luke Cunning and, and Mario Faro. And I've, you know, those I'm, I would, it's fair to say, I mean, if you've listened to Lockdown Sharks for any period of time, you kind of know my feelings about these guys. I've, I will say, both of them, I think, have kind of played well this season at times, and I think Mario Farr has played a lot better this year. When we, when I talked with Shang, you know, we kind of talked about how his game is really kind of 
I think he's played a lot better maybe because he, there's he's not as much pressure. There's a little bit more kind of guys who can kind of carry the same load as him, right? Especially compared to previous years where it was he had to kind of make up for the Eric Carlson's and the Brent Burns um, of the world. And uh, this year there's more guys kind of who can kind of help with the penalty kill, kind of eat up a little bit more minutes. So it's not Mario Ferraro having to kind of to to, to carry the load as much. Um, and Luke Cunning, who's, you know, I was very meh about the trade. Um, you know, when they traded a third round pick for Luke Cunning and John Leonard. Um, and then the contract has been okay, you know, but like Luke Cunning is beloved in the locker room, right? He's wearing an A right now, especially with um all the injuries that the Sharks have to to their captains, well to everybody, but um, you know, and he seemed you, you saw when he scored the other night against the flames, like just how much the, like the team kind of, you know, get the attaboys and stuff like that. Um, and he would be a really nice kind of fit for what Toronto kind of needs. Um, but getting that first round pick back, um, sign me up. And I'll, here's why. So looking at the NHL standings right now, um, Toronto is, uh, they're probably going to be third in this in the in the Atlantic Division, right? Um, you have Boston and, and Florida. Florida is playing. Uh, oh, I know Maple Leafs have been playing really really well lately, but um, the Panthers uh, in our recent lock in this week's locked on um, NHL um, power rankings, we had the Florida Panthers first they, as the best team in the league. They, they have been playing that way recently. Um, Boston has been playing great as well. So those two teams are going to probably get either the first or second or those are your, your one, two right now in the division. Cause there's an eight point gap between the Panthers and the Leafs. So the, right now, as I'm recording at seven 30 at night, um, the Panthers have, or the Bruins have 79 points with 57 games played. The Panthers have 78 points with 57 games played. And the Maple Leafs have 55 or have 70 points with 55 games played. And then the Red Wings at 66 points. So they're only four back uh, with 56 games, I know. And then the Lightning are 65 points with 58 games back. So um, looking at the old remaining strength of schedule, Toronto does have the third hardest strength of schedule remaining, uh, including games against the Rangers, uh, two against the Bo the Bruins, two against the Panthers, two against the Canes. Um, they have some tough, tough games left um, going down the stretch. So, yes, they're going to be in the playoffs. Uh, but they're probably, if they continue and they, they take that third seed, you're going to have to play Florida or Boston in the first round, whoever gets this, the two seed in that division. Do you trust the Maple Leafs to beat one of those teams in a seven game series. And yes, I know they finally got over the hump last year, winning their first series uh, in a thousand years, but still, right? Like, do you trust them to beat one of those teams? If not, you're looking at a pick like right now, Toronto is 23rd in tankathon. And again, plenty, they have games in hand compared to some of these other teams, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you could be looking at an early 20s pick, maybe at the worst mid-20s. Like, you're you're setting yourself up to have a really nice draft that way. If you have, if everything kind of goes to plan, you have, if everything goes super to plan, you have the Macklin Celebrini at number one if the Sharks win the lottery. You have the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins pick, which could be, you know, you're hoping for that like 11, 12, 13 spot. Uh, I think they're right now they're at 14th. And then you could be looking at a pick in the early 20s. Or you could be looking at adding, you know, there's plenty of great players there, especially, you know, you kind of it's such a weird year and people are going to value other players. So, okay, maybe a guy like almost like a quit and musty type of player falls to you. Um, and then you're going to have a pick in the top end of the, the second round. And you're going to have a pick in the middle of the second round. Thanks to the devils. Unless even if the devils go on a run and get to the Eastern conference finals, you could be looking at four 
four potential first round picks. Um, but if not, you're looking at five picks in the top 50. That is mm, that is what you're looking for right there. So, yes, I know Farrar and Cunning are super valuable players and great players, but are they going to be around in your next iteration of great Sharks teams? I don't know. I don't think so. Again, we're trying to build sustainable success. The best way to do that is to get young, good players, develop them, grow them, and have them come within. So um, if the Sharks can manage, even if they got to flip something back, take back a bad contract, whatever, if you can get that first round pick out of Toronto, then maybe you package your Penguins pick and your uh, Maple Leafs pick if you want to trade back up in the top 10 uh, and go get somebody out. Like you could. My career, the world would be my career's oyster there. So uh, we'll continue to look at some of the other potential guys who could be on the way out, um, kind of some of the who they're maybe linked to. If Mikel Granlin might be just too valuable to keep or to, to trade. Uh, so we'll get into some of those guys here in just one second. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to recent Indeed surveys. So join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners to this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now. Support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, um, some of the other guys here um, who could be potentially available. So, Mikel Granlin, um, you, you kind of look at it like it's Mikel Granlin. I know he's got an extra year on his deal. Um, Duclair, Capo Kakinen, and Bear Battle. I think these are the realistic guys who could get traded, right? And I know like Hoffman and, and, like, yes, those guys, Hoffman and LeBanc and Jan Rude and some of these other guys um, who could be potentially available. I just, I don't, I don't see, like, Hoffman makes too much money right now. The Sharks are already, I mean, they could maybe retain. Maybe you you find a third party to retain, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, but, like, that contract is not good and it's not easy to fit in a $5 million player right now. And yes, you don't have to need $5 million. Just as a quick reminder um, at the trade deadline, like you don't need $5 million. It's, it's kind of based on whatever's left of his contract from that year. So, or Hoffman's out of $4.5 million. Right. Um, and you know, you could, you could retain, et cetera, et cetera. But um I just, I, I find it hard to, like, nobody wants your trash, right? And we as as fans were very, you know, oh, man, we could, we could trade Hoffman. We could trade Kevin LeBanc. Like, those dudes aren't doing anything on the Sharks. Like, why are, why would another team willingly be like, okay, here you go. I did have a fun Kevin LeBanc one I tweeted. I don't remember if I talked about it on the podcast, but I'll bring it back. Um, trade Kevin LeBanc to the Chicago Blackhawks for, like, a seventh round pick um whatever like just get whatever back like one it frees you up of kevin lebank two you're doing right by a veteran like kevin lebank who has been a good shark and has struggled three you're potentially helping chicago blackhawks who struggle to score and it gives them the blackhawks a chance to kind of showcase lebank for a little bit and then if they want to re-sign him this summer they can etc like i think that makes a lot of sense but again like you're not getting anything if you get like a seventh round pick from Kevin LeBanc and you don't want to retain salary, um, please, thank you. Sign me up. Like whatever, you know, um, it's, it's just both. Everybody's ready for a new, but of these kind of big guys here, right. Um, 
Graylin is the most interesting because I think he could get you. He's been playing. He's been playing the best, most consistent hockey of like all you know of your Duclairs, um, your Barabanovs, and Granlin. Capo Kakinen, I think, is a different animal. We'll talk about him in here in a second. But like, I'm still very much. You're, you're, whatever is not bolted down, I'd be more than willing to sell off. And um, it would be interesting though if you would have to either one find a third party to kind of retain on Granlin, which is going to lower your what you get back, right? Because you have to kind of pay that middleman. Or if the Sharks are willing to kind of just eat it for the retain for two years, knowing that next season you're not going to have much, kind of like the Blackhawks this year, right? Like the Blackhawks don't have anything worth much worth trading, right? And looking at next year, um, Nico Sturm will be uh, an expiring contract and $2 million. That's an easy trade, right? Um, Fabian Zetterlin, he's not going anywhere. He is a piece of your next core, right? Phillips Adina, RFA, um, who, again, if the Sharks want to keep him, like that's, that's, that contract's not going to be very much. Jan Ruda, he makes under $3 million. Vlasic, we'll talk about here at the end. Kyle Burrows, like I'll have two years left. Like a lot of these guys just aren't making a lot of money. Uh, so if you want to try to trade them, um, you know, Matt Benning will have two years left at $1.25 million. Like, fine. The one thing though is if so, maybe the Sharks are just like, you know what, screw it. We'll just we'll eat some cap here to try to get the best return, knowing we're not going to be very active at the trade deadline, or at least we're running out of big pieces to move, right? Um, that does hamper what you could maybe do here with Couture and Hurdle, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, maybe you just eat it and say, you know, we're we're kind of we're tapped out. Like we we've sold, we've stripped everything down. Um, but it seems like David Quinn would be if if you're going to trade Grand Line year, you have to I think blow my career away. Or at least that's what it seems like from David Quinn. So um, if someone offers a second for Granlin. Are you saying yes? Like, I think that's that's probably where you're looking at is something like that. With Duclair, I still think maybe maybe a late second, a third is probably more likely just because of where he's kind of playing it. I, I feel like the Rangers are Rangers and the the Vegas is kind of the two teams I would look at, especially with Mark Stone going on injury, uh, injured reserve right now or LTIR. So he's gonna be out, he's gonna be out to the playoffs. Wink, wink, nod, nod. They need another score. Um, Duclair, I think, could really fit in there. Um, they have all their picks. They have one, two, and a three. Um, they don't have their fourth for some reason. Um, but yeah, they have all their picks. Their prospect pool is not super great. So I would be looking at like that third round pick for Anthony Duclair. Um, contract that they could easily fit in. Again, I don't care if I'm trading with Vegas. Like Vegas is in a different league right now to the Sharks. So you're in asset gathering mode. So I look at. Excuse me. I look at a team like that uh, with Vegas, and then, like I said, with the Rangers. Um, you know, who is again? They're they need some more. I think some more scoring help. Duclair, who was uh, you know former prospect of theirs, um, there's like photos of him wearing like sixty three or something, just outrageous number. Um, they don't have a third. They have a second. They have a fourth. Maybe. Maybe, maybe what you do is you ask for a lot. Maybe you ask for that first round pick and you take back the Barkley Goodrow contract, which I know Rangers fans are trying to get out from underneath. He's got three years left at $3.6 million. Uh, Barkley Goodrow can come in and be your third line, fourth line center for the next three years. Um, and the Sharks don't have to worry about like cap space right now, right? Like they're, they're going to have plenty of cap space for the next couple seasons. Um, and maybe, yeah, maybe you ship to Claire, take back Goodrow, uh, one of their thousand A's, and then you ask for that first round pick as part of their salary cap dump. Maybe so. Um, and the cap Kakinen, right? Again, if the, if somebody offers, you know, a third round, uh, goalies are so hard, you never know because, but like. Maybe Markstrom gets traded because he's kind of the big name out there from the Flames, and then somebody's a little bit desperate after Markstrom gets traded, and Capo Kakinen is kind of you know as as teams try to fill in, um, not be left without a chair, and Capo Kakinen could be that guy that you're 
again, trying to squeeze that last juice out of. And then Barabanov, who I know he's been linked with the Lightning. I, I'm just, it's so sad for Barabanov, who they came out, you know, he broke his finger. Then he turns out he had COVID as well. So it's just been a rough year for Barabanov. I, I feel bad for him because it kind of felt like it was going to be that like culmination year of the past couple of seasons. But um, mid, mid pick type of, of of for him so yeah it's it's poor bear ran off so we'll get into uh the big dogs here with kotor and hurdle and why it feels like they staying for now but this summer could bring bring something different so grocery bills are so expensive these days but now they don't have to be start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with the free ibotta app and get cash back every time you shop. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That can cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. So you can buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you've been dying to go to, or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you just add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you can get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five dollars for just trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On NHL when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play and download the free Ibotta app. Start earning cash back and use code Locked On NHL. That's I B O T T A in the Google Store or App Store and use code Locked On NHL. All right, so where does that leave Kotor and Hurdle? Kotor, who um, has been added, added to a couple trade lists. I don't see either one of these guys getting traded right now. One, neither one of them's healthy, right? Um, and if I'm trading for someone, I probably want them to be able uh, be healthy. So the summer, though, could be a different animal. And I've always been on the, like, I think Hurdle is going to be around for a while. Now, even Couture, I think, who does... Three years left on his after this season, while well, three years left on his deal at eight million dollars, and I, I know Hurdle's been, or I know Couture. We'll start with Couture because I know Couture's been, you know, he's said I want to stay here in San Jose. I love San Jose, but like he's not going to win a cup here in San Jose. Like realistically, right? Not going to win a cup here in San Jose. Um, well, three years left at his eight million dollar contract does have a three team no trade clause. So he does kind of like Brent Burns and, you know, like kind of can pick where he wants to go. Um, you know, f- like that's that's what's going to be expected from from him. So uh, if he wants to go somewhere, he's more than, you know, I think my career will be more than willing to kind of make that happen for him. But um, again, I, I think with the injury situation right now, it's tough to see him kind of go. And, you know, we can have plenty of of conversations this summer about where does Kotor go? What makes the most sense, et cetera, et cetera, um, for him. But I'm starting to kind of change my thoughts on Kotor and Hurdle both being here next year and what that would kind of look like um, for, for the team. And I've, I've thought, Greer is going to want to try to keep one or both of these guys around, you know, to kind of lead the way. Um, that way you're not kind of asking your young guys to to do so, you know, kind of carry the load too much. But I also think back to what Greer said, where he didn't want this to be like a complete fire sale um, type of situation where you burn it to the ground. And if you trade one or both of these guys, um, it starts to f- feel like that right because again (laughs) if you looking at who is potentially on this team next year and you could you'll have plenty of cap space you can go out and sign some guys but Granlin who we just talked about potentially trying to trade Nico Stern Fabian Zetterlin Eklund Giovanni Smith um, those guys are all signed on the roster right now signed Um, and then Luke Cunning who we tried to trade in the first segment uh, and Phillips Adina who's an RFA it's a lot of children running around um, next year. Like Mikel Granlin would be the oldest player at 31. Um, Nico Sturm at 28. Like that's a lot of children running around and, and trying to figure things out. Um, 
and you could be looking at Will Smith, Macklin Celebrini, whoever, like on this team as well next year. Um, you know, and even like, yeah, you know, because Redeem Jimmick will be gone, Oscar Lindblom, like those guys who are in the, the, um, maybe you could bring up a guy like, yeah, <laughs> Scott Sabrin, who's 31. Like, you know, it's just, just a lot of children. And you can be, you know, maybe you're signing guys, some older guys to kind of short term deals type of situation. But I just, I, I think I have a hard time picturing both of them being gone. Maybe one, maybe both, maybe neither. But uh, I don't know. And I, I still think, yes, the cap will go up this season. Uh, this season, I just still think it's it's kind of goes against what Mike Greer has kind of said of like we don't want the, to kind of burn this thing to the ground. And you know, having Kotor, who's you know, I know this season has been a nightmare season pro, from Kotor, but I still think Kotor can be a really valuable player on and off the ice, right? And you, you you saw how happy the guys were for him when he came back, and I know he wasn't playing super great coming back, and you know I think that's part of being dropped in the middle of the season here, um, trying to get your legs under you in, in January compared to like getting your legs under you in uh, September. But I, you're just I don't think you, your young guys aren't ready to kind of take that role. And I don't know how Mike Greer, you're, you're going to have to add so many guys in free agency. Um, and yes, yeah, some of those guys could hit and you're going to be trying, you know, why these guys could be potential trade baits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you could try to resign some guys, but I, I just, I don't think the sharks are ready to move on from these guys yet. And again, if either one of them goes to my career and says, I want to get traded, uh, I'm sure my career will be happy to kind of try to accommodate them as best he can. Um, I just, I don't know if the sharks are ready to kind of rip that bandaid bandaid off right now. Right. I think they still need some of the guys to kind of help lead the way going into the next. And uh, with the promise, maybe like, Hey, I can't do it now, but when we get a little bit closer, I'll, do my, you know, I will kind of make right type of, of deals, but for you. So, um, <clears throat> and yeah, with Hurdle, like I know he's, he wants to win. And I know this year has been tough for him, but like, you know, he, I think he does love San Jose, right? He, he's signed for several more seasons. Um, and that contract is, you know, he still has a full no move clause uh, that expires at the end of the 24, 25 season. Uh, which then turns into, I think, a three-team trade list and then um, starts to open up after a couple seasons there at the end of the contract. But yeah, that, that's a big contract to, to try to move. And, yeah, I again, if Kotor or Hurdle both want to leave, I'm sure uh, Mike Greer will do what he can. But, I, again, I think having those guys around is still really valuable to your young players to kind of learn and grow and, and lean on. And especially as you're going to start to see more young players entering the fray here um, going forward. So we'll keep track of, of the, the, the trade rumors uh, again, we're two weeks away guys, two weeks away. So um, make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course you can watch on YouTube as well. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. And you can follow the, me on Twitter at my fry hole. Until Monday, uh, we'll be talking about the Sharks Preds game and get caught up on Barracuda action as well. So make sure, uh, yeah, until then. Bye, friends. <laughs>